Hey, what's up everybody? Will Mosby here back with yet another DIY video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can add some faux or some fake beams to your ceiling or your tray ceiling that'll drastically change the look and feel of your living room or any room that you wanna add them to. So let's go. All right, so in our house, we had this tray ceiling that was just kind of really bland and it offered up a great spot to add some, some fake beams. Uh, the tech, this was literally my wife's idea. It's been two and a half years since being in the house. I think she's been begging for them for about two and a half years uh, and I finally got around to doing it. So this really changed the look and feel of the living room, pretty easy project. So we're gonna get into the build and uh, go through that step by step. We're gonna show you how to actually make the beams and install them onto the ceiling. All right, here we go. Alright, so the first thing to mark is the location of the center beam and I'm doing that with a red laser light. If you look closely, you can probably see that laser light. That's marking the center beam and where that's going to go. Then I'm going to use some painter's tape and mark where all of the stud locations are. And yes, at the time of shooting this video, I was watching curling from the Beijing Olympics. And since I was mostly a one-man team, I had to install a support block to help hold the support board. And here's a tip. Make sure that your painter's tape is wider than your support board so you can see where the studs are. So once I got one side screwed in, I went to the other end of the support board and screwed that one in. All right, so let's talk our way through this thing. Uh, we got our first board that we're gonna hook into with the uh, faux beams up there. But let's just kinda catch this up to speed and talk our way through it because I learned a few lessons here trying to uh, figure out how to span that gap with a tape measure and get an accurate measurement. So what I ended up doing was I hooked a, a nail right up there on that wall and so i hooked a nail and started running the tape along it like this and let me flip this around so i hooked a nail right over there and was trying to run the tape across the tray here and every time i got so far of course the tape measure falls even when it was on the nail hooked on the nail so finally i had the idea all right i'm going to hook it on the nail the tape measure onto the nail and then I'll tape it to that and try to secure it, which is what I did. And then got it so far across about the middle of the room and taped the tape measure to the ceiling right there. That way we wouldn't fall and then I could measure the rest of the way. It ended up being 166 and a quarter inches. So, uh, you know, 13 feet and some change. Um, and obviously the blue tape is uh, marking where all the studs are. All the studs are running this way. They're not, they're not running, you know, cross this way. They're all running this way. Uh, and I checked that because I had a video of this room when it was framed, um, when our house was being framed. So I knew that the studs were running that way. All right, so I uh, capped off the electrical, uh, the little LED light that was uh, right there. Just kept that off and it will not be used. And if my wife wants to hang a uh, chandelier or something like that from the beam underneath, then we can tap into it. But I was trying to figure out a way, I had a dead man right there, and I was gonna lift that up and try to use the dead man and hold our uh, one by eight in place. And it just did not work. It just, it would not work. And I was afraid I was gonna crash something. So I ended up just putting a support block that you saw right there and I could rest it on, clamped it down and that held it in place to where I could finally get over here 
and screw in onto my uh, first stud here. After I had that done, the rest was easy. So I'm just gonna put up one right now and I'm gonna make the beam next and just attach it to this. We're gonna stain it and all that and then just attach it to, to this little support bracket right here, uh, tack it down. And that's gonna be my test. And then once I have that figured out and everything is working the way, then I'll do the other two because we, we're gonna put another beam right there and another beam on the other side. And yeah, we're gonna have to kind of finagle that, that uh, that's a 45 I think over there, but I'll, I'll figure out what that uh, angle is and uh, we'll have to cut that beam on an angle. All right, let's go take care of the first one. Here we go. All right, so this is a 16 foot one by 10 that I've already cut to length for the tray ceiling and I'm just gonna split it right down the middle and that's gonna act as the sides, the left and right sides of the faux beam. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of light sanding on all the boards just to take some of the sharp edges off but not really smooth it down because I want the boards to look a little rough. Um, I want character in them. So I'm not taking all that out with the sanding. So now I'm gonna attach the sides to the bottom one by eight using these 90 degree guides and a couple of clamps. And I'm taking my time to make sure both ends line up perfectly. Then I'll tack them down using 16 gauge brad nails. A good idea as you're nailing sections, you want to nail sections and go along the board, but use a clamp to kind of secure the two pieces together and get them exactly where you want them before you actually add the nails in. That may or may not have been obvious. All right, so once you get both sides attached, you should have something that looks like this. And if you want to do some more sanding at this point, you can. Or if you want your beams to look a little more rough, take a hammer or chisel or anything and just rough up your boards a bit more. Then when you're ready, you can start applying stain. Here I'm using Minwax Walnut and just using a shop rag to apply it. All right, so successfully have one up, got the second support board up there and working on the third, but this section right here obviously has an angle. Yes, I'm watching American curling right now in the Olympics, but I've got a, uh, a wall here that is at a 45 degree angle, uh, just real, real close. So what I had to do was over here on this board, the support beam, I'm two feet away, two feet here. So I found the center, that's where this one is, and then just worked two feet in, and then going to work two feet in. So I made a mark two feet in, right there, and then set my laser uh, to run across. I actually measured right there at the crease, and I measured straight out to where the two foot mark is, and that's that little small piece of tape right there and then set my laser to connect from uh, that little piece to that little piece. And then that showed me on the wall here where I was gonna hit on the center point. That's the center of the board is where it's gonna hit. It's not on the ends. So now uh, I've measured, I actually put an anchor up there, a little pin, um, nail pin up there and anchored my tape to that, ran it all the way across and figured out 
exactly what my length is to center, and that's 125 inches. So now I'm gonna go out and cut it just a little bit long because uh, if you're too short, well, uh, that's gonna be very costly on uh, some expensive boards here. So I'm gonna cut it just a little bit long, a little bit longer than 125 inches, put my 45 degree angle on there, check that, and uh, make sure that we uh, have the correct angle. Then we'll, uh, we'll bring it in, test fit it. I should have to take off just a smidge on the end, but I would rather be a, a little bit long than a little bit short. Here we go. All right, so here I'm gonna use this handy little protractor thingy that uh, I can find any angle, just put it up there against the wall, get the angle right, and then tighten it down. And then I'm gonna take it out to the miter saw and set the blade to that angle. All right, so now after cutting our board and just kind of test fitting it, it was absolutely perfect. So right dead center, it's 125 inches across. That isn't quite a 45, it's almost, um, but I just went off the, uh, the angle that I, that I took and cut that angle. And it's, I mean, it's, it's real close. You can't, you can't hardly see it. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's just, it's real close, but anyway. Dead center of the board. That's looking real good. Um, I've got one screw in right there holding it in place. Before I put any more in, I'm actually going to use this board as my template for the other three. Because the other three, right, we've got our two sides and our bottom piece that goes along the bottom. So I'm actually going to take it down and we're going to use, out, use this as a template. Here we go. So now I'm gonna take the support board and we're gonna put it up on top of a two eight foot ladder. So luckily I am 6'5 and can reach that. And just put this on the little support block that I've got on the wall. Kind of tack that down with a couple of clamps, just holding it in place. We're not making it real tight, just making sure it doesn't fall off from left or right. And then we'll go to the other end and uh, screw it in. So now we'll go to the other end, take the clamps off and secure this end of the board by screwing it in. And now that both ends are screwed in, we can take the support block off and screw in the rest of the board. And there's what it should look like with your support board in place. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how we installed the beam to the support board. And you had to have a partner for this one, so my wife was so kind to help me out, and let's admit it, this was her idea. So we had already lifted it up and put it in place uh, to test fit it, and we knew that it was correct. So all we had to do now was just nail it in place using two and a half inch brad nails. Hey, so there you go. Hopefully you found this video helpful and now you can go out and add some faux beams to your ceiling if you so desire. But hey, before you go, if you're into this kind of DIY stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. Click that little bell notification so that you are notified anytime I upload a new video and I will see you in the next video.